I want to start today by talking about a politician on the right who we should all be worried about, who's on the rise today, a politician who has brushed off accusations of fascism while dabbling in the great replacement theory, a politician who wants, quote, secure borders because of dangerous Muslim immigrants, who has minimized the threat from COVID and cast doubt on COVID vaccines, and who wants a return to the traditional family free from the influence of so-called LGBTQ lobbies and the evil influence of Disney. No, I'm not talking about Donald Trump or Marjorie Taylor Greene or even Ron DeSantis. I'm talking about Georgia Maloney. Georgia who? Georgia Maloney, leader of the far-right Brothers of Italy party. She's in the final weeks of campaigning ahead of Italy's elections later this month, and she is poised to become Italy's first woman prime minister and its first far-right leader since Benito Mussolini himself. It would be unprecedented in modern times for a Western European country and close ally of the United States to have a leader that right wing from a party with fascist roots, no less. But Maloney says it's nothing to worry about. Take a listen. I am Giorgia Meloni. I am 45 years old and I am the president of Fratelli d'Italia, the political party of Italian conservatives. Four days I uh, have been reading articles in the international press about the upcoming elections that will give Italy a new government, in which I am described as a danger to democracy, uh, to Italian, European and international stability. Maloney claims she's not a fascist, but the connection is too close for comfort. First of all, fascism was born in Italy when Mussolini coined the term a century ago, and Maloney's party is a direct descendant of the Italian social movement, a group formed after the Second World War by Mussolini's allies. The flame logo used by Maloney's party today even used to be the symbol of the Italian social movement. As a 19-year-old activist, she even said, quote, Mussolini was a good politician in that everything he did, he did for Italy. Maybe it's not fair to take her to task for something she said 20 years ago. But Benito Mussolini's own granddaughter is currently a member of Maloney's Brothers of Italy party. Maloney herself has praised a member of Mussolini's government. And if these fascist roots aren't enough to scare you, just take a look at her policies. She's extremely anti-immigration, proposing a border wall-esque naval blockade to stop North Africans from entering the country. And she's got a great Tucker Carlson impression, echoing his oft-espoused great replacement theory by labeling illegal immigration as, quote, ethnic substitution. Maloney also opposes adoption by same-sex couples and has slammed Disney for having gay characters in Frozen 2. And her party also has a history of limiting access to abortion. Oh, and here she is on stage with her admirer, Steve Bannon. Yes, that's Steve Bannon. So you might be thinking, America's going fascist. I'm going to move to Europe to get away from it all. Well, Italy, where fascism began, they're trending, they're trending fascist too. But it's not just Italy. There's France, where, remember, Marine Le Pen made it to the final two presidential runoff in April and seems to inch closer to power every few years. OK, so no France, no Italy. But what about lovely, quiet, progressive Scandinavia? Well, more bad news, I'm afraid, for those of us concerned about the global rise of neo-fascism. Check out Sweden, where a party with neo-Nazi origins, the confusingly named Sweden Democrats, surprised everyone in Sunday's election. It's still too close to call, but they've won more than 20 percent of the vote and could become Sweden's biggest party. Have a listen to the party's leader celebrate its success. Jag tror vi fick 5,7 procent i slut. Just nu har vi 20,7. Okay, sure. Jimmy Orkesson. Leader of the party might not look that threatening, but the party he leads, the Sweden Democrats, have a dark history similar to that of Giorgio Maloney and the Brothers of Italy. Although the party has denounced neo-Nazism in 2009, Orkesson wrote that Muslim immigration to Sweden was our biggest foreign threat since the Second World War. Just last month, the party's legal spokesman tweeted, welcome aboard with a one-way ticket, next stop Kabul, along with a photo of the Sweden Democrats' repatriation express charming. After welcoming millions of immigrants and half a million asylum seekers, Sweden became one of the most multicultural European countries in recent decades. And so perhaps predictably, 
xenophobia combined with a rise in shootings and violent crime have allowed the anti-immigrant, nativist, far-right agenda of the Sweden Democrats to take hold. And some local Swedes are worried too. I don't like their tone, how they talk about integration and immigration and stuff. And I, I don't, I don't like, I don't like their their approach to it, basically. And and I'm scared that they are like shifting the whole, the whole, like the whole parties and every party to to the right. I think it's disgraceful. It's. Um, Nothing that I think Sweden want to be like. Um, if I make a parallel to what happened in the US when Trump got into power, everyone thought that it was something really incredible, couldn't ever happen here. But now it is, uh, and it feels very strange. Anti-immigrant sentiment, rising crime, rising food costs, and surging energy prices from the war in Ukraine. Is it possible to pinpoint what exactly is driving this worryingly far-right movement across America? But the truth is, we in America are not alone. Fascism, whether semi or not, is a global problem. To help us understand what's going on in Europe, let's turn now to Jason Stanley, professor of philosophy at Yale University and author of How Fascism Works. Also, Rula Jibril, a foreign policy analyst and visiting professor at the University of Miami. She's also an award-winning journalist uh, from the Italian television, where she was once the first Muslim host on Italian television, I believe. Jason, Rula, thank you both. Jason, let me start with you. Your tweet was the entire inspiration behind this segment. Uh, you tweeted a terrible indication about the future and a warning that you cannot escape the far right by leaving the US to Europe. How bad do you think things are in Europe right now? Well, I think, as you said, we face a global problem, a problem of a global fascist international, uh, as we did in the late 20s and the early 30s. Uh, whether it, it is accompanied by violent militias this time in Europe, uh, it looks that looks less concerning than violent militias here in the United States. Uh, but True. when you said when you said this was Tucker Carlson's great replacement theory, uh, it's not Tucker Carlson's. It's Mussolini's. It's Hitler's. This idea yes. that immigrants are an existential threat to native populations, and we must take extraordinary means to suppress them uh, and police them, uh, is the core of fascism. Uh, yes, of course, the Great Replacement Theory does come out of Western Europe, sadly. Uh, my point was for American viewers who know it through Tucker Carlson, this is what the Italian uh, possibly next prime minister is pushing rather scarily, not just on cable, but as the head of a NATO government. Ruler, what's behind the success of this right-wing movement in Italy? Why are they seemingly at the forefront suddenly now uh, in, sept in September 2022? It's not sudden, Mehdi. They've been building this movement for almost 30 years and they've been exploiting basically multiple crises. The crisis of food, as you said, the crisis of energy, the, the pandemic, uh, the lockdown. They've been, but also they've been weaponizing fear and hate towards them. The more we move towards a multiracial, multi-ethnic democracy, people like you, who is a UK and US citizen, and people like me, who is an American, European citizen, are becoming the threat. But not only us, progressives, critics, I mean, Giorgio Meloni yeah. wants to purge any critical voice from the Italian uh, media, from the Italian press. I mean, she's lobbied against me uh, vehemently and routinely simply because, in her eyes, I am not Italian enough. I am not, I am too progressive even to speak about violence against women in Italian television because I don't represent Italy. And the scariest part about what she's trying to say is trying to say we're not the problem as a party. The problem are, or the threat, are these foreign invaders. These, I mean, she, the woman basically lobbied against uh, a Holocaust survivor, 92 years old, who asked her to edit out from her symbol, from the party logo, Mussolini's roots and, and the symbol of fascism. She basically yeah. attacked her, but she's trying to portray herself to international media as being this moderate. Not only she's not moderate, yes. look at her platform. Her platform is as scary as it gets. 
Uh, it's funny, she says in the video, we didn't play all of it, she says, well, we're mainstream conservatives, just like the Republicans in America. I'm like, that's not, probably not the best analogy right now. Um, Jason, I, let's, I, talk about the, let's talk about the European counterparts, because you made the, you know, fascism comes out of Europe. Great replacement theory comes out of Europe. But you know what comes out of America? Culture wars. And I listened to this uh, Italian politician talking about fighting with Disney, and how can I not think of Ron DeSantis? Absolutely. Uh, the one sees exactly the attack on trans rights, the attack on LGBT, yeah. which is going between Eastern Europe, the United States. It's completely international now. The exact same tropes get repeated. Uh, so, uh, so we're see and we're seeing and and uh, Maloney has said, oh, we're not anti-Semitic. But what we need to look at right now in Europe as the, the, the sort of car, calling card of fascism is anti-Muslim anti sentiment, because Muslims yeah. kind of play the role that Jews play now, uh, Jews played in the past in Europe. Uh, so when we see the Sweden Democrats, when we see the anti-Muslim rhetoric in some, by, when some of yes. these politicians, it is deeply reminiscent of, uh, of the past. Just swap out uh, Muslim for Jew, and you can see what's going on. They don't like women. They don't like Muslims. They don't like yeah. Jews. They don't like immigrants. Basically, the three of us are fascism's favorite three people. Um, Rula, let me ask you this. You teach in Florida. You teach students in America. If they say to you, why should we care what's happening in Sweden or Italy or France, what would you say to them? It's a global movement. The threat is not only against people like us. It's 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 going, I mean, when Mussolini started, the issue was initially against maybe Jews, but then it became against anybody that disagrees with him. This is how they're trying to export and import authoritarianism. The Russian model is their favorite model, Assad model, uh, MBS model. You see a united front among these autocrats who are trying to dismantle democracy, to attack democracy everywhere. Why did Steve Bannon go to, to, to Italy to somehow... Yeah. Uh, help Georgia Meloni, why Georgia Meloni is connecting to Viktor Orban or to the far right here in America. Yes. We need to view this as a global threat, as a threat against everybody, because none of us are safe or free because until we're all free. Listen, Georgia Meloni yesterday, she basically kept endorsing torture, kept endorsing bombing of NGOs, rescue ship in the Mediterranean. She kept mm. endorsing all kinds of things, but calling the one thing that matters, which is Putin financing far right movement as fake news. She basically is questioning the legitimacy of the U.S. intelligence community, saying, "Well, what they're saying is fake." While well, she herself is paddling in fake news coming it's out gonna of be, Russia. It's going to be uh, fascinating to see what happens to some of these transatlantic relationships with these new leaders. Uh, Jason Ruler mentioned Steve Bannon. Where does he fit into all this? Again, let's talk global. Let's talk transatlantic. Are we imagining, are we exaggerating the links between the American right and some of these far-right European movements? No. I mean, first of all, they can read the paper same as everyone else can read the paper. Uh, so, so, the idea, so the attack on critical race theory, that's been taken over. The, the gender ideology, that's fully global. Uh, Brazil, from Brazil to Russia, uh, the, gen the attack on gender ideology takes a very similar structure. They're trying to replace traditional values. They're an existential threat to traditional values. Uh, so uh, so uh, Maloney herself has visited with Vox in Spain, which is a sort of almost a cartoonish uh, fascist, neo-fascist party uh, with its anti-immigrant sentiment. And let's remember in Mein Kampf, when, when Hitler uh, praises the United States as a model of his national state, the example he's talking about are our harsh anti-immigration laws, race-based anti-immigration laws, uh, yeah. uh, culminating in the 1924 Immigration Act. So this idea of immigrants replacing traditional populations, that's the core of fascist rhetoric and ideology that represents immigrant populations and, and, uh, and, and socialists as existential threats. And it's, and it's global, from Italy to Hungary to Russia to India to the United States to Brazil. Yeah. Um, Rula, last question to you. You're here in the U.S. You're seeing the political scene here. You're seeing what's happening in places like Italy and France. Do Democrats, do Joe Biden, Nancy Pelosi, the, the leadership of the Democratic Party, you, we know that Joe Biden came out with his semi-fascism remark. A lot of Democrats immediately ran away from it. Senators, oh, it's too much. We shouldn't say that. Do you think Democrats are taking the threat seriously enough from the F word? 
from fascism? Not enough. I am, I, am, I, I am so sorry to say that. Not enough. People like us, Mahdi, three of us, actually understand better than anybody else the threat because we know what happened. Uh, in 2018, in Italy, you have a candidate for the far-right party, Luca Traini, who went on a shooting spree to kill people who look like us, but also he shot against the Democratic Party. And, and I think Americans underestimated Trump the same way they're underestimating uh, this far-right movement. They're out yeah. to dismantle, to kill democracy, to decapitate the rule of law, and they're willing to go as far as embracing those violent movements. I mean, Meloni never really distanced herself yeah. from Casa Pond and others who are willing to kill and kill people like us simply because we look different and we think different and we maybe love differently.